So now we have another guest, a little bit more serious, but he's, he's fun in his heart. Uh, in fact, nikuwa nime muliza iswali, wacha kwanza jintroduce, alafu wacha jisema. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You'll find I'm very loud. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it infects you also. Yes, it is. Please it, introduce yeah. yourself to the people. Oh, my, my name is Kenneth mm -hmm. uh, Kasera. I work for the Regional Center for Mapping mm -hmm. of Resources for Development mm -hmm. as the Youth Engagement Lead. Mm -hmm. So basically, my job is to connect the user to the technology. As mm -hmm. simple as that, right? Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. Can I just be very honest with you, Kenneth? <laughs> when I was in high school, yes. maps. Tulikuwa na exam alafu unashtukia mtu anatumia stream. Anatumia stream. That thing used to give me headache, oh, that, that headache, was, headache. At, at, at and I've never that. used it till that today. Mm. So point hiyo kitu ilikuwa nini first of all? Na no, it, mm. it, it possibly was used to measure the distance of a road, ah. right? You can remember na una, ina, ina pinda pinda ina pinda pinda. Then you stretch it on a ruler, right? Mm, mm, mm. Then you get the distance of mm, that road, mm. then you Ni wapi ni mate kwa sai shwali. Eh? Ni wapi? Uh -huh. I'm not to teach why. Like, surely, if it is in Ah, hashtag is why I'm not in your idea. Ah, interesting. Hmm. Mm. I want to hate also on these mm. mathematic things, but Kufanya <laughs> makeup here in, in a take his no, you, you see, yes, yes, mm. the learning symmetry. Hey, right? you have to get like, angles at. Do you know I use a ruler to do some things? A ruler, True. like a ruler. I'm not <laughs> joking, guys. <laughs> I use a ruler. <laughs> yes. I want it to be precise. Uh, anyway, mm. aside from that, now that we are melting down into this, tell me. Mm. I want you to break it down for me. Okay. Lema language. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What you do and how exactly. you do it. Yeah, let me bring it down for you in this sense. Uh, you can remember when you were young, you took some photos, right? Mm -hmm. And now you still take photos as well. More than I did. More than, then. yeah. So mm -hmm. you, from that, you can be able to tell this was my heart by then, mm -hmm. your height, mm -hmm. and this is how you are right now, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can see the changes, right? I didn't I, have I used hair. used to be a little bit rounder. Okay, now, I'm a little now bit you small. are. Yeah. I didn't have hair, now I have. Yeah, so you can be able to tell the changes in that, right? So assuming that you are a forest, mm -hmm. then uh, possibly we go back to 1990s or 70s mm -hmm. and look at that forest the way, to, the way it was. And uh, then uh, we look at it now. You can be able to see the changes, okay, in terms of people resettling in, or some trees are no longer there, cut down. So the only difference is that now you are using a camera, mm -hmm. and our cameras are in space. Wow. Yeah. And, and the higher resolution. And the higher resolutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And more expensive. So not only high, but there are, there, are, there are a number of them depending with the applications. Okay. Yeah. So we ha okay again, please, mm -hmm. guys. I'm very. very Uneducated, there are very many things I don't know about <laughs> no, his particular yeah, field. So, Kisken Meuliza Swali, Unaji Uliza, why? Please, just allow, allow, forgive me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was under the notion that perhaps mm. we share satellites or we share the yeah. said cameras yeah. in space. Yeah. Is that yeah. something, or we have particular ones to Konasisi Zetu Za Kenya? No, some of, some of these things are global initiatives and uh, there are countries with satellites and they are they share that information with, with the rest of, 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 of us. Mm -hmm. By us, I mean the African countries. And, uh, but in Africa, we have countries with satellites as well. Mm -hmm. So when I, when, I, when I say satellites, there are quite a number. Like we have uh, Earth Observation Satellites that deals with imagery, the same principle that works with your phone. Mm -hmm. When you take a photo, the same, same principle they use. The only difference is that you are holding your phone, mm -hmm. but the satellite are on space running in their own orbits. Mm -hmm. So based on some science that we don't want to go to, mm -hmm. they keep on that track. Yeah, so uh, they're able to help you see, possibly because they can, from the time they're launched to mm -hmm. now, they can tell you this is how it was, this is how it is, and so we can predict based on what we've seen, this is how it can be if we don't do one to three. Mm -hmm. And that's how policy makers and decision makers come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's... Yeah. So, Apoqua Earth Observation, mm -hmm. uh, these things are, are making a lot of sense. Okay, we'll, we'll get to all the mm -hmm. different uh, things that they, yeah. they use the US, out of right. that Earth Observation. Exactly. But let's get into agriculture and food. Exactly. So now, mm -hmm. you are going to tell, let's say I'm a farmer. Yeah, true, mm -hmm. Exactly. How are you going to help me? What what exactly. is your what is your role with mm -hmm. me and mm -hmm. let's say the mm -hmm. people in mm -hmm. shareholders or stakeholders mm -hmm. and then there's me the farmer. The right? farmer. Mm -hmm. So the, the the various levels in this in this regard. Uh, for example, if uh, depending with what you're farming, right? 
because we mentioned that we can be able to see various things, uh, the physical aspects of your plants. Mm -hmm. One of the critical things that uh, possibly as a farmer you need to possibly want to know what can I plant here and that brings the aspect of suitability. Mm -hmm. So this cannot be one factor if I call it so for us to be able to know that this place is suitable there's various factors that we need to have uh, overlaid with each other. So once we can be able to use Earth Observation and GIS, GIS I mean uh, Geographic Information Systems, we can be able to map all the various layers mm -hmm. and bring them together. And, uh, and then uh, based on some theory that uh, possibly you also get from schools and from research, we can be able to weigh them. Mm -hmm. So why once we weigh them, we can be able to tell uh, for maize, uh, this is the right place for it. Mm -hmm. For which this is the right place for it. So the first simple application of uh, earth observation in, uh, in, in agriculture as a farmer is that we help you to know what should be here in terms of even the soil, right? The soil mm -hmm. structure, the soil cap holding capacity of water and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we can be able to tell that by even overlaying, as I've said, various layers of these factors mm -hmm. to help you know I should plant maize here. Mm -hmm. At the second level is that, is that uh, as a country, it will be interesting to see what you're feeding to, right? I'm a small, I'm a large scale farmer, but I need to see on the bigger picture, mm -hmm. how do I feed Kenya? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on that aspect, we are able to help you do something we call the yield estimation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at the end of the year, you can tell if this is possibly what's happening or this is how my crops are based on their health, because even from the leaves, you can tell the health of a, of, of a plant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so based on this, we can be able to tell that uh, we expect you to be having this at the end of the season. Uh, your maize, maybe 10 bags or three bags or six bags. Mm -hmm. Then you can be able to tell, okay, then I need to maybe, what do I need to do to improve the, the yield? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so based on theory again, and what researchers do in, school, in most of the universities in Kenya, mm -hmm. is we can be able to tell that uh, the spacing in terms of planting. So the first thing you know, the size of your farm, mm -hmm. right? Because we can be able to map the size of your farm. Then you can be able to, using that, just simple mathematics in terms of the spacing. Mm -hmm. If I plant maize here, another one there. So based on that simple calculations, you can be able to tell the yield if everything is okay at mm -hmm. the end of the season. Why is it that every other time in the news, you know, the yields are how? Mm -hmm. Either climate or exactly. lack of rain, too, mm -hmm. too much rain. Mm -hmm. Is it us who are not really mm -hmm. working with you accordingly? Are we not, <laughs> are we not educating ourselves or is it no, acts of no. God? Mm -hmm. No, no, I think uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are headed there. I mm -hmm. think to a level where stakeholders and engagement and stakeholder participation will be something critical. Because if technology cannot help us, then it's useless, right? Mm. Yeah, so I think it comes in the aspect of uh, engaging the right institutions. Within each and every country or Kenya per se, there are institutions mandated to do one or two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they should be engaged. There should be capacity built in terms of the skills mm -hmm. required. And uh, let's go as fast as even the tools that are appropriate for that particular kind of, of, of use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once we have everyone on board, then this aspect of uh, uncertainties will be something of the past because uh, each institution come with their data, if I can call them so. Mm -hmm. And most of the times uh, the prediction that we do are not that accurate because of lack of data. Uh, so if, we, if institution is in, then it means they'll come with a bit of information, then we bring this together. Then we come up with a robust information that can be used for decision making. So the future is bright. So the future is bright. The future mm -hmm. is bright, yeah. yeah. Something else that we can derive from mm. all this data mm. and all these cameras up there mm. is climate change. Exactly. Right. Mm. But why is it that we're all shocked that it's so cold and it's not July? Like I've grown knowing <laughs> July and <laughs> yeah, But yeah, yeah. before and after, are we mm. saying that it's mm. global warming? We're going to blame it on that, or mm. once again, are we not mm. preparing ourselves accordingly? Are we not mm. listening to the right people? Are we not mm. working with you right? What, mm. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. So allow me to start by, first of all, trying to help us understand what climate change is. Because mm -hmm. it's not something that happens once. It's uh, something that takes a period of time to happen. Yeah, based on what we studied in school, we all know it's a change of weather for mm -hmm. a long period of time, 35 years and so. So then what causes, causes the changes to... It's more than my years of life, so yeah, <laughs> trying to do yeah, the math. So, so what, mm. what really brings it, I think, uh, some of the easy bits of it is that uh, human aspects really mm -hmm. cause it. Yeah, the way we live has a way in, uh, has, uh, somehow 
affects the environment that we live in. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we always uh, talk of sustainability and sustainable development and uh, some such kind of goals that are globally appreciated by countries. Mm -hmm. So the cost first of itself is an uh, aspect like deforestation, right? There's a way in this earth as a system is connected. Mm -hmm. So once we interfere with one for a long period of time, we change things. Domino effect. Yeah, so we change things. So one of the things that we change is the with our behaviors like if we go to the urban urban space like in towns mm -hmm. we have industries all over we have uh, people settling in forests and things like that so and i mentioned that once we interfere with one part of that ecosystem that is fragile mm -hmm. for a long period of time then we cause a problem so some of these changes have uh, led to possibly increase in temperature right because that cover that you used to have no longer there mm -hmm. yeah so some of, the, some of them are deforestation, we, we cut trees, and trees are very critical in terms of even the carbon stocks and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so once these things are done, uh, then that effect trickles to the environment. Mm -hmm. Then the environment, uh, the way Magari, <laughs> the, the prof, the late mm -hmm. professor used to say, mm -hmm. that nature is unforgiving, right? Very. Yeah, so it, hand, it hits back. Yeah, so once it, it does that, it changes even the things we depend on, like agriculture. Yeah, the rainfall become erratic at times if they are frequent but unpredictable. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you see, if the season is changed, then there are a little bit of issues, mm -hmm. even in terms of what we should put on, right? Mm -hmm. If we are used to having a, um, from maybe April to August to be cold in Nairobi, mm -hmm. then that changes a little bit. So it, it will affect even your pockets in this sense, because you need to start running for Possibly you budgeted for warm clothes, right? It's it's difficult. Yeah, then mm. now you find yourself you need you need not not warm. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a lot, a, 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 much of these things is the nature being unforgiving and for a long period of time just doing the same thing and the, yeah. There was a notion that was trending, right? Mm. I don't I want to say it last year sometime, but mm. it was. Mm. I, I don't know how to measure COVID-19, <laughs> COVID-19's effect, because I want to say the halfway point, but we're not even over with mm -hmm. it yet. So mm -hmm. at some point mm -hmm. when COVID-19, the pandemic had just hit. Mm -hmm. So we had people coming out on social media talking about, oh, the earth mm -hmm. is healing itself well, because we're all at home now. <laughs> you know, we're not doing what was, was, we're doing to doing. destroy or, you know, kind mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. erode oh. things mm -hmm. so at home and mm -hmm. now the earth is healing itself is <laughs> it's supposed to be feeling better why are things not changing <laughs> yeah. that, that's a tough one because uh, yeah. i'm not a covid expert ah. in the first place no no me so <laughs> at climate the, the earth is supposed to, you're observing are you not yes so, so it's we, healing itself mm -hmm. mm. So why are things not mm. back to normal? Well, now we mm. need a, a longer period of time because in my head, I guess one plus year is, is, should yeah, be yeah, enough yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. to be significant. So to, to answer, to try to guide that, is that uh, uh, the only way that this can happen is if we change our ways, right? Mm -hmm. So COVID is just uh, came the other day and things already worse. Because I can remember that, like I read from somewhere that uh, the weather predictions for Kenya. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are saying that uh, the temperature will increase uh, by 2.5 degrees Celsius Ooh. from, that's between 2000 and 2050. So you see, COVID came 2019, right? Mm. So from 2000 already, this was something that was seen. Mm -hmm. And so the only solution for this was to us to change our behavior in terms of afforestation, let's plant trees. And I think the government is doing quite good in terms of planting million trees or something like that, and mm -hmm. also protecting forest. And at that time, we saw them evicting people from Gong Forest, right? Mm. Yeah, so some of these initiatives are just meant to help uh, bring this down. And it's not only Kenya. I think most of even African countries mm -hmm. are working towards making sure they have appropriate land cover to help really uh, deal with the, as the aspect of global warming. Because mm -hmm. carbon is involving this. And so if we can sort that mess up, then it will be something that but it will take another long time since i say this weather it's a climate thing mm -hmm. it will take us time to change but i think we're moving towards the right direction oh man it's to what 2000 to 2050, 2050. Mm -hmm. so wow the predictions like 50. yeah hey. so those are wow. numerical models that really help us to see mm -hmm. where we're headed to hey. if we don't change so most of the time they are we try to come up with scenarios as well mm -hmm. that uh, most of them most of us call them business as usual, right? Mm -hmm. If we continue to do this, this is how it will end up. And I've seen Mukai, the CS for Health, really mm -hmm. using it quite a lot. If we <laughs> yeah, so 
those scenarios help us to know business as usual. Uh, if we change a little bit of one factor, mm -hmm. if we change a little bit of the other, then possibly this is where we'll end ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, right? You have a very interesting job. Thank Let's you. get to one of the projects that you're doing. I saw yeah. they have a website, by the way. I cannot mm. remember the name of it, but he'll give us soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the projects yeah. that you are working on, first of all, mm. there's Agra, but that came to an end around yeah. May, mm. right? Mm. So now the one that is going on is Severe. Exactly. It's a very difficult, very, very fancy very name. Very fancy name, yes. exactly. Yeah. Tell me about the project. So Severe, uh, first of all, is a Spanish word that means to serve. Mm. So we're really in tune with serving. Mm, look at you. Mm. <laughs> so we're in tune with that. And so we really appreciate the opportunity given to us by Kenyans, first of all, to be able to be part in terms of uh, giving, providing information that is useful for policymakers and uh, the farmer to mm. the, that lower level. Yeah, so Savir means to serve. And uh, this is a project that is uh, a partnership between the Regional Center for Mapping of Resources for Development, mm -hmm. based here in Kenya, and uh, NASA. NASA, NASA is the, that was NASA, impressive. Uh -huh. NASA, na NASA is not the, the political NASA, mm -hmm. not, the, not the political vehicle. Okay. They disbanded, but that's <laughs> not what we're talking about right now. Yes. Yeah, and uh, that is the uh, National Aeronautics Space Administration for the United States, mm -hmm. and the uh, USAID. So the three come together to form SAVIR, mm -hmm. with the main objective of uh, uh, improving uh, the capacity of institutions to use earth observation in four thematic areas. Mm -hmm. So one of them is agri and food security that we've been talking of. One is uh, another one is weather and climate. We have land use, land cover, and ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And also we have water and water related disasters. Mm -hmm. So quite a number of other thematic areas as well in terms of even air quality, uh, urban planning. They still find themselves in land administration. They still find ourselves themselves in, in in what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Savir has various hubs, the same structure, but now the change is the regional center. Mm. So we have uh, Savir West Africa. The one that we see here is Savir Eastern and Southern Africa. So it means we cover Eastern and Southern African countries. It's very impressive, guys. Let's take a minute, okay? We are representing Eastern and Southern Africa. Okay, yeah, continue. Mm -hmm. Should I, I continue, right? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, so there's one in West Africa that mm -hmm. covers the Nigeria and uh, the rest of West African countries. Mm -hmm. It's called Savir West Africa. So still the same structure, the only change is ASIMAD. Uh, USAID and NASA are constant, mm -hmm. but now they have an uh, institution like uh, Af Afrigist uh, being, being part of that. Okay, then we have Savir Mekong. We have uh, Savir uh, Himalaya. And uh, so far so good. Mm -hmm. Amazonia came to be as well. The mm. one for the uh, South American. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, this mm. project sounds big, mm. but they also say that mm. change starts with you and me. Exactly. So, the viewer, mm. or personally, mm. how can I get mm. in tune with what you're trying to do? How can I, mm. you know, make mm. that one step, even if it's mm. okay, I'm picking up something, but mm. that's a little bit more mm. uh, digressive than I thought. Mm. How can I help mm. the bigger picture? How can I participate? Good question. Good yeah. question. Yeah. So, like I said, that technology without the user being aware of it, first of all, is uh, it's useless. A uh, good example is the use of uh, Google Maps, right? And I think when you come from home, normally you key, mm -hmm. and that's uh, purely land administration and management and land use and things like that. So you, oh. you just key things, right? You key. I need to go to town. I mm -hmm. need to go to the station. And then it will tell you this is the appropriate route, right? So there's something going on around uh, behind that mm -hmm. to help you to even choose the best route. And so one of the ways in which users have been able to also come in this is just to be part of the participatory mapping in regards to allocating these features on the on 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 on, on Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people have gone to an extent where we have application apps in Google Store that just helps you to be part of the mapping industry. Yeah, this is my home. Mm -hmm. I just put a sticker, this is my home, then it picks in the, all the systems. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of even uh, locating where things are, mm -hmm. I think people become aware of uh, where around them. And so the, you just key in, this is where I am, then some systems pick that up. 
okay, you can uh, be on Google on OpenStreetMap. That's another technology that people use to be able to look at themselves. On OpenStreetMap, then uh, it picks that point for you. Mm -hmm. So it keeps on adding and adding and adding and adding. If I, if I, for example, as a farmer, oh. so, so any, any bit that you put in there goes towards helping us to make some decisions, right? Mm. Yeah, so any critical element that you key in terms of, uh, we can, so long as there's a space element or the location element involved in it, you're helping us already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the, for the people who make those apps. Why, mm -hmm. why is it always some English person not mm -hmm. pronouncing things right? <laughs> Kijabe, Kijabe <laughs> Street. Where are those? Uh, no, no, Please get uh, someone local, local so we know where we are going. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's critical. That's how I get lost, just because mm -hmm. someone said something in a funny language. In a funny language. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. exactly uh, hashtag exactly. is one morning. Okay, yeah. that's not yeah. why we're here. We're here to talk about... No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. But I, I get the concept because there's mm. sometimes I've used, I mm. want to say, not really Google Maps per mm. se, mm. but just the concept of the maps concept to get maps, somewhere. Yeah. And mm. it's telling me to take a right turn, mm. but there's no right turn. True. But I can see there used to True. be a right turn. True. So True. development True. happened, things, things, True. things. So it's still kind of operating on the yeah, so previous. Yeah, that needs to be updated, right? Uh -huh. So the updating can take long because it's expensive, I can say so. Yeah, and uh, possibly uh, that's why the aspect of participatory map mapping came in to be mm -hmm. to make it less expensive, a little less, no, no, not less costly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you can be able to, someone elsewhere can be able to help you update it, it can, it can go a long way in reducing your cost as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even uh, you've heard of uh, topographic maps, right? Yeah, so... That came in handy. I did that in school, okay. Exactly. So th that map that you used to put a ruler and, uh, on... <laughs> Leave the, the, the it me. was an example ah. of a topographical map. Right? Ah, you're getting me emotional. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you've not used it, you didn't know where to take it now. It used but, to confuse me, but, but okay. just, you, you get where, where, where to apply it, right? Thank God for technology. Where? Yeah, so. All right, so there's a conference happening mm, exactly. this year, mm. and it's a virtual one. Tell yeah, exactly. me about. I feel like just telling you, but mm. that would be kind of pointless because I want to engage him because I already know, okay, no, no, in the summer me, website. That would be important for me to know what, what really you picked from, from our website. I got notes, guys. This is a <laughs> serious one. <laughs> All right, so I see yeah. there's a RIC 2021 International Conference, mm. yes, mm. and then the thematic areas, but he has already kind of named some of them. Mm. So we have agriculture and food security, weather and climate, mm. water and water-related disasters, land mm. use, administration and management, mm. innovation and software or applications development. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and, and in a nutshell, what he does is provide your information mm. services. Yeah? Okay. okay, so uh, can I help you? Go no, ahead. you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You did it well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just to give a background on how this came to be is uh, somewhere along the line we got to know that uh, it was impossible for us to find a platform where policymakers and scientists can sit down. Yeah, those are two separate lines. Very different. Yeah, so we we had to find a way to bring policymakers and scientists together in one room. Mm -hmm. Because once uh, most of the information that are supposed to be used in policies come from the scientist. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um, at times they don't see eye to eye. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we decided to have this conference to bring those two together. And uh, the first one we did in 2018. And it was important because we got to understand uh, the policy formulation process and how we, uh, and how we come in, that mm -hmm. chain, how we come in. Yeah, so because we got to know, to know that once we understand how, where we belong in that chain, it's easier for us to inject information uh, as they move along. Mm -hmm. So we had the first one in 2018, that is the SMAD International Conference, that brought around uh, 400 participants from all over, the, all over the world. So it was uh, an eye-opener to us as well. And also we thought of, uh, apart from just bringing policymakers on board and scientists, why don't we also have an aspect of innovation in it? So anybody who has an idea can be able to present this, then uh, we back it up. Because mm -hmm. uh, technology keeps on improving and improving, and uh, we should not uh, inhibit the, the young people from uh, also trying to uh, invent new ways of doing things. Yeah, so we came up with an innovation half, be, half bit of it mm -hmm. that enables us to tap in into various technologies that the young people have to, and recently we see in the use of drones mm -hmm. in Kenya as well. 
Yeah, so some of these technologies has to be tested somewhere and uh, before they can be allowed to, to be used. So we provide that platform. That conference also has that platform with it. Mm -hmm. So for this year, our theme is uh, um, resilience. Resilience is a, uh, possibly how do we bounce back. Mm -hmm. So we want to rethink about that and uh, see how best the systems, uh, the art systems can be able to be bounced back after some disturbance. Mm -hmm. And so we expect to see wonderful presentations from colleagues around the world and various projects in uh, Kenya and beyond demonstrate their role in resilience mm -hmm. and uh, link that to climate change as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we welcome Mm, not only scientists, but also all the users. By users, I mean, be, 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 be it the media, I think you play a critical role in this as well in terms of information dissemination. Mm -hmm. And that is a critical chain that I think we find uh, at times uh, we miss. So we really long to engage you more. So to help us uh, disseminate the information that we produce. Mm -hmm. And that will be uh, easier if you understand what we do, right? Mm. Yeah, so we also intend to have the media on board, as long as, 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 as well as the, the farmers, the general users of this information, the governments, the private sector, the universities, the colleges, primary schools, high schools. They are all I saw you to went to thing. State House Girls High School exactly. for some mentorship situation. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. So you said that this mm -hmm. conference is important so mm -hmm. that you know where you kind of fit in in the chain. Exactly. Where do you fit in the chain? So in the chain, the chain, the, the chain has a, a, a number of, uh, uh, let me call them uh, stakeholders. From the bottom, not, 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 not bottom up, I'm not a politician, <laughs> okay? You're a funny uh, guy. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the entire chain has uh, people that produce data, right? Mm -hmm. The chain has people that use the data you produced. The chain has people that now they don't know that you produce mm -hmm. or you, but they possibly need it and they, and they don't. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, it's, a chain of, it's a chain of beneficiaries, a chain of uh, intermediaries, a chain of data producers, a, a chain of data archive. They only do data storage. But uh, there's a chain of uh, policy makers as well. Mm -hmm. And all this should, head, should, be, should be steered towards uh, possibly uh, one, one, one direction. So we got to understand that in, the, in, that, in that process, in that chain, we are possibly data producers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when you produce it and you hang it there, then it helps no one. So we need to link up with that chain as to like a bicycle chain, right? Mm -hmm. If one is not uh, there, not then mm -hmm. you don't have a chain. You just have a... <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we've learned to be able to, be, to learn how to join that chain so that it can be one chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we try as much as possible not to be technical. It's not easy, I can tell you. I can imagine. It's not easy. Because it's we, data, it's data. There's yeah. no... There's no... The, yeah, there's no... Painting the, it with no, yellow. Yeah. Where's it? Hey, where's yeah, where's it? Where's yeah. yeah, so it's data. What do we say? Kwa lugha ya mama. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, so... And, we're, we're and our best, it's yeah. important for all parties to work hand in hand so that there's mm -hmm. kind of a smooth flow. Mm -hmm. So do you ever, this mm -hmm. was not part of the questions, but I'm curious. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you ever mm -hmm. find that maybe you're giving data and, mm -hmm. and it's not being received well, mm -hmm. or you are mm -hmm. asked to reevaluate mm -hmm. your data because mm -hmm. it looks mm -hmm. wanting, mm -hmm. there's something wrong here. Is there something like that that yes, happens? Yes, yes, yeah? yes. This happens when you don't work with people. Like I mentioned that uh, each and every institution in Kenya has a mandate. Mm -hmm. So you don't step on their mandate, but you support them, achieve their mandate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I'm trying to do something on weather or information or climate information services without involving the institution that is mandated to have that weather lens on everything we do, mm -hmm. then when you take the data to them, they'll uh, reject that, right? Because first of all, you're stepping on their mandate and you didn't agree on that. Mm. Yeah, so the first bit has to come from uh, the angle that you work together, you co-develop, you co-design. So that once uh, the end product can be something that is a, a partnership or something that you guys did, not something that the regional center did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you go that angle, we've come to learn that it's much acceptable than me sitting in the office, mm -hmm. drawing my things in my software that I claim to know, then I push it to them, mm -hmm. they'll reject it. Yeah, 
Oh. And the kazi yangu. There's a lot of customer care in this. It's not just weather. It's not just you and data. Exactly. There's a lot of... Because you have the policy makers. Exactly. The people disseminating the, the exactly. data that you have collected. Exactly. Hey. Exactly. Guys, it's a bit to, to answer course, Flani. I think it should be compulsory. How to deal with people? Uh, the, exactly. Exactly. W once you get that right, then technology has a place. But once you don't know how to deal with the people, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. There's a problem. There's a problem. Various approaches are already are in place. Mm -hmm. But once you... I don't know if it goes back to what we are taught at home, right? Yeah, mm, what our deep. parents taught at home. Mm. Right? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's wired to that direction. Hey, all right. Yeah. So when is the conference and can we join? Is it exactly. open to the public? Exactly, exactly. The conference is, uh, begins on uh, 17th to 19th of August. Yeah, and we, the program will be out. It's a virtual, so it means we can't sit for long. So uh, most of the time on uh, 17th, it will start at uh, around uh, after lunch. That is around uh, eight, uh, around 2, 2 p.m., right? Mm -hmm. So 2 p.m. to around 5 for the next three days. That is uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, we, can, we can share the, 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 we'll be using Obilo. Obilo is, a, since it's a hybrid, uh, so we expect to, not hybrid, sorry for that, it's a virtual. Mm. Yeah, so we expect to have a platform that can't be hacked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's uh, another, another limitation on wow. virtual systems where someone can take charge, right? Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's COVID with us, but it's fine. We, yeah, so someone can take charge. So it's uh, Obilo. Obilo is quite a, a robust system that uh, enables people to join. So we'll be sending that link to the emails. Uh, so far, so good. We have like 562 people who have registered. So they'll be receiving that email mm -hmm. with uh, the link to Hubilo. They have to register again mm -hmm. in that platform. And we'll be sending also a video to help them uh, go through and navigate through the, 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 the Hubilo system. Yeah, that's a lot because you know there's a generation that is not quite technologically savvy. Exactly. I, I want. Exactly. Okay. Not no one was born knowing. Exactly. But there's a generation exactly. that will mm. catch it a, a mm. bit faster than, than the, another. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I like that there's mm. kind of a tutorial. Exactly. How to. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, any last words before we wrap this up? Mm. No, just to welcome us to the conference, mm. and also to we are uh, located along around Kasarani opposite the Catholic police station. Mm, wow. So we are their neighbors. Is so that on purpose? Like uh, security? No, I, I, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but we are peaceful people, so uh -huh. we are not close to the police station because we are criminal. <laughs> or, to be, or, to, or to be watched because uh -huh. of what we do. But uh, that's how we got, that's where the government got a piece of land for us and that. Because mm. it's a government institution, intergovernmental. So that piece of land was provided to us by the government. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's wha where they located us, and we are appreciate and grateful for that. Yeah, so we welcome all to that conference. The registration is still ongoing. Yeah, it's uh, Rick. If you just tap Regional Center for Mapping, International Conference, it will take you to uh, our, 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 the, the website for, for the conference. Mm -hmm. Then you can register, then uh, we'll be able to send all the tutorials that you require. And also, we also have training. We have an institution that runs a training called the Regional Center Training Institute. I saw the prices on that thing. Yes. Yeah, so Nani. You, yeah. hey, it's not a lot of money. But anyway, you're dealing with very, very advanced technology. So We, we are grateful. Hey, guys, go check out that website. Where, oh, please give yeah. them the website. The website, it's uh, asimadi. Mm -hmm. uh, asimadi.org. I want you to look at them. Oh. Confidently. Asimadi. Dot asimadi. Asimadi at asimadi.org, exactly. Go check it out, guys. Yeah. Recently, I heard on the news that there was mm. a petition for virtual meetings to be mm. stopped mm. <laughs> because there's some politicians who are refusing <laughs> to, mm. to, 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 to go to meetings <laughs> or give funny excuses or no connection. Yeah. And the person was so annoyed, like, yeah. no, we need to start meeting physically. So, exactly. guys, please, mm. for this particular one, just behave. <laughs> behave. Mm, it's for our good. It's for our own good. And exactly. it could save future exactly. generations. Good, good. Probably good. will. Not good. It probably will. Hmm? Good. All right. Yeah. So I usually ask for social media handles, but I don't think this applies here. Yeah. It doesn't. I'm, I'm not good in, in social media. Very unfortunate. I would like to see what, you do, what you've I'm been doing good. on social <laughs> I'm media. I'm not good in social media, but mm -hmm. we can be able to send that to you guys later if okay. that's acceptable. So. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Aye. So, in case of it was in mm. case you missed it or it was a bit technical somewhere, mm. which I don't think it was coming mean me lower, if I have mm. understood. I, I, I tried, right? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Okay, cool. for on mm. Facebook, what for channel on Twitter, what for underscore channel on the gram. Mm. Our hashtag is Why in the Morning or mm. Thursday Vibes. We are done for this one, but we're not done in total, so please stay with us. See you in a bit.